This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this movie, we're going to take a look at the Extrude Faces tool and the Cut Faces tool. We'll use these tools in part to help us model a bird. Before we start, we want to establish our project directory. To do so, I'll choose File, Set Project, find my project folder, choose the directory, and choose Set. Now when I go back and open my scene, all my scene files are automatically mapped, and I can easily choose those and open. And when I open, the images, in this case is a reference image on an image plane, automatically loads into my scene. This would be true for any other textures that I might have inside of the scene as well. Our reference image shows the model that we're going to be doing, and it is of a crow. And we'll start the crow with a primitive polygon cube. Create that cube, and we'll primarily be starting our model in the side view. I'll just bring that cube up and scale it and just start to shape it based upon my reference. Now, I don't want to make the geometry too big. I'm actually looking very closely at the reference image and keeping the size of the geometry in relation to the size of the detail that's in there. This way I'll have plenty of edges to work with and I won't have geometry that's too large or faces that are too large. We don't need to make the geometry perfect just yet. We're just trying to flesh out the overall shape. So with that first section established, I want to choose Polygon Face and extrude that out. Now I can choose the Extrude tool directly from the shelf, from the Polygon shelf, or we can grab it from the Edit Mesh Extrude menu. And we'll pull out another section. And I'll use the Scale tool just to size that up. And we'll rotate that a little bit. And once that's shaped, we'll choose Extrude again. And pull more geometry down. And again, scale that. and rotate and again I want to get the rotation of my geometry to follow the flow of my character or of my model. We can see that the bird starts up here at the head and then the flow of its own shape comes down and it funnels down into the tail. We want the edge flow of our geometry to do the exact same thing. That section looks good. I'll extrude another piece. And we'll grab the Z and pull that out a little bit further. And every time I'm switching with the manipulator, if I want to go to rotate, I'll just click on that ring first, and then I can rotate the tool. So now with the scale, I'll just click on the scale icon first, and then I can start to scale it. Now it doesn't matter which one you choose, that will open up the scale tool regardless. Extrude another piece down here. This one's a little bit more important because eventually we're going to have to extrude the leg out of here. So I want a nice flat surface here so that it goes in line with that geometry. And I also want to make sure that it's rotated properly 
to head down for the rest of the tail. That'll work for now. And we'll extrude again. And we'll just pull this all the way out for the tail. Need to go back to the top. And we'll extrude one more section out here so that eventually we'll be able to extrude that beak out. And that'll work there. Now if you're having a problem selecting the actual faces, you can turn on face centers. You can go to display, polygons, and choose face centers. And that sometimes can be a little bit easier to select. It certainly makes it easier to see where your faces are. And I'll select that face there in the head, and we'll extrude that out for a beak. And scale that just a little bit more. All right, that'll work. Now, I didn't finish off the top completely, because I know I'm going to eventually add another edge loop through there. And that will handle the top of the head, as well as some of the detail here back at the tail. That gives me a pretty good profile. I'm going to switch now and go to the front view and make sure that my geometry is in alignment here with my reference. And for this, I'll go to vertices. Be a little bit easier. Just choose my select tool. And I'll select all of my vertices. And use the scale tool, okay, which is R on the keyboard, my hotkey, and we'll scale these out for the body, and I'm really focusing just on this area right here, sizing that up, and all that looks pretty good. And now looking down here, we'll scale this geometry out for the tail, and I'll wait on that. I'll move up to, because that has to scale out much wider, so I'll move up to the head and neck, and we'll scale this down. And we're not looking to make this perfect right now. Just trying to get it approximate. And we can always tweak the geometry as we go, and typically we do. Never get anything right on the first time around. Creates a nice flare there for the tail. I'm almost ready now to start on the leg. But before I do that, I want to cut my geometry in half. I'm going to cut the geometry in half because we don't need to model both sides of our character or of our model itself. We only need to do half of it because it is a symmetrical character, or it's at least symmetrical enough that I can build one side and then just mirror the geometry over to the other side. So right now, we're just going to focus on, on cutting it, and then we can get rid of any of that extra geometry and then continue modeling our character's leg and foot. I'm going to switch to object mode and just select our model and choose Edit Mesh. And I'll open the options for the Cut Faces tool. We have two different ways of cutting with the Cut Faces tool. The first one is an interactive method, and we'll just choose Enter Cut Tool so we can see that. And with the interactive cut tool, wherever I click, it's going to draw a plane that will slice my geometry. And it actually doesn't really even show up until after you slide the mouse just slightly. So you'll click with the left mouse button, and then just move the mouse a bit, and you'll see that slicing plane pop up. Now wherever we place this, if I let go of the mouse, it'll cut the geometry all the way through, front and back. If I hold shift while I move that slicing plane, it'll snap in 45 degree increments. That makes it a little bit easier for some precision cuts. And let go of that, and we'll come over here and I'll let go, so you can see how it cuts all the way through my geometry. 
makes a nice straight line. However, that's really not cutting it down the center, so that's not what we want. We'll just undo that. And our second option is to actually choose a plane. And what we want is the YZ plane, and we can look at our world axis for that information. We'll select YZ, and we'll just choose Cut. We don't actually get any type of slicing plane visible. Okay, and after I choose Cut, it does cut the surface. We can see that pretty clearly in our perspective view. Okay, both front and back. And it also creates a manipulator, and that manipulator is a plane, and you can kind of see that going on right there. Well, because the history is still attached, and we can see that there in the channel box, there's my poly cut, we can interactively move that as well as rotate. So even though there is that option of going with the interactive cut tool, we can choose a single plane and still interactively go back and change where that slice took place. We want it to be perfectly centered, so I'll just undo those changes and double check and make sure, and that's good. We don't need to do anything else just to back out of the tool. I'll just choose Select. And I want to grab all of the faces on the other side of the bird and delete them. But as I just tried to do that, I selected the image plane instead. So that makes it a little difficult. I can't grab. There, we just got some of them. But every time I create that selection mask, it's grabbing that plane. So what I'll do is I'll just choose the camera from View, Select Camera, and we just want to hide that. And I'll set the visibility. I'll type in zero and hit Enter. And that turns the visibility off for the camera, but leaves my image plane still visible. Now when I go and select, I have no problems, and I'll just choose Delete on the keyboard to get rid of those faces. Continue to extrude out the leg and eventually the foot. But that grid is already starting to get in the way, so I'm just going to choose the icon from the panel and turn that off. And let's go to face. And we'll extrude. Before I pull that down for the leg, I'm going to create just a little bit of a base to pull that leg from. We'll just pull that out slightly. And we'll go to our side view. So that's kind of representing maybe some feathers or, you know, just a little bit more of a muscle section there. And let's rotate that just so it's going in the direction of the leg. And I'll extrude again. Bring that section down. And we need to scale that down. And I also want to rotate it so that my next extrusion will go down the length of the leg. And bring that down right to the top of the foot. And rotate that so it's nice and level with the foot. And we'll create another extrusion. That will be the base of our foot and actually serve as the base for the toes to be extruded from. And this gives me a face now here on either side that I'm going to extrude out. And we'll pull it out just a little bit to give us some extra geometry in between the toes. And extrude again for the two outer toes. That gives me three faces across the front to pull out three toes. And of course, in the back, I don't need three toes back there, but I'll just be grabbing that middle one to pull out that back toe that that crow has. Now I have all four of those faces selected. And we'll pull those out. You can see that works in the back and the front. 
and we only need to pull one axis. So, and it's typically going to be your z axis that will give it the depth. And we'll size that up. And we'll extrude again for the rest of the toe. And that back toe is obviously smaller. We'll fix that later. But we'll just keep extruding the rest of the toes for now. And now when I try to move and reposition that last face, you can see that the face in the back goes in an opposite direction. This is because we're still in a local mode. To switch from that and go to global, we can just choose our icon right there, and now we're in a global mode. And you can really tell because the manipulator moves to the center of our selection. It's no longer local at the end where the face is actually located. Now when I move, they both move in sync. That's a little bit easier to deal with. And that will work. Let's take a look. Starting to shape up. I've got some extra geometry that I want to get rid of. I don't want these two large faces here on either side. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to use my marking menu to choose vertex. And I want to take these two verts all the way around from all those other ones and snap these to this single vert here. I'll turn snap to point on and just drag those over. And again, we need to do that for all of these verts all the way around. And snap that. And now you can still see that there's a face sandwiched inside of there. We need to get rid of that. We can do that easily by just selecting the vertices and choosing Merge Vert. And I'll hit G to repeat my last command and merge all those vertices together. And when I do that last one, that face disappears. Okay, let's shape up the foot. Grab my outer vertices, scale those in just a bit. Probably even scale the middle one in just a touch. Now turn that snap to point off so we can move these vertices back. And we'll scale just those toes. Okay, let's zoom out and see what we have. Just for a finishing touch, Let's get that beak to be a little smaller. There we go. And now we have a super rough version of our crow. Decent layout, decent geometry layout, pretty good shape. And we're just about ready to add some more geometry to it. But that will conclude our movie for now on extrude faces and the cut faces tools.